All right, me guys, we're back again with another beginner video. So last video I did, I talked a little bit about a shopping list for some soft plastics. So to get you started in um, lure fishing, what I'm going to do today is talk to you a little bit about how to start using them. So we're going to look at two contacts. Um, first one's going to be uh, bridge and also fishing some, some pontoons or some canals and really focusing on trying to use current or water flow to our advantage. So you probably heard of the old saying, um, no run, no fun. Well, this is, I'm going to try and explain why this works and why, you know, when that current's moving or when the current's flowing, uh, we it, it's easy to catch some fish. So in our um, beginner shopping list, one of the lures that I recommended, let's see if we get this in focus, is our little trick swim. So this rigged up on a 1 12th jig head, the other one that this works really well with is your little um, two inch grubs. Again, rigged on a 1 12th jig head. The 1 12th jig head is really important um, because we're trying to emulate, you know, a bait fish just floating down, maybe hopping up, yep, 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 I'm good, and then drifting back down. We don't want it to plummet really quickly to the bottom. We want to get some nice hang time and we want the current to do its thing. Anyway, let's have a quick look at some of these contacts, right? So our first one is fishing a bridge pylon. Now, one of the things that's really important to understand is not just fishing bridge pylons, but anywhere where there's current flow or water movement is that your current moving, your water moving is kind of like your sushi train, right? It brings bait and stuff along. It moves it around, little prawns, little bait fish, all that sort of stuff gets washed along on our current line. So in this picture here, I've got um, a big yellow arrow, and that's our current line pushing up against this bridge. Now, the reason why current and flow is, is so useful or so good is because when we've got structure, so in this case, bridge pylons, the current or our sushi train is pushing bait and stuff past that structure, but as the water goes past, it creates these back eddies in behind the, the poles or the, the, yeah, the poles of the bridge. So as the water pushes past those bridge poles, it swirls around the back and it creates what we call a back eddy. So that back eddy is kind of like your little boots at your sushi train, right? So you're sitting or a fish is sitting in that back eddy, doesn't have to swim against the current. It's really easy for it to sit there and all this bait and gets washed past. So our bits of sushi are flying past on our sushi train. Old mate can sit in there in that back eddy and just pounce out and grab it whenever he wants. So here we've got um, our bridge, and you can see our estuary marlin sitting in behind in these back eddies behind each bridge pylon. Now, each of these pylons may not hold fish, but if we were to sit there and we we're trying to cast at each individual pylon in those spots to see if there's fish there, it's very low percentage fishing. What we want to try and do is maximize the chance of getting a fish on every single cast. So what we've done, you can see my uh, road boat parked up there down the back, so down behind, down current from the bridge. And that yellow line is really where I want to try and get my lure going. Because if I can get it along that line, I'm high percentage fishing. I'm going to try and... I'm, I'm getting through so many different fish zones, or there's so many different potential spots for fish to hang out along that cast that I'm really kind of upping my chances. So instead of putting one, two, three, four, five casts to hit, hit each pylon, I'm putting in one cast and I'm working it past each and every one. Okay, the other reason, the other thing that we're trying to do here is get that lure, so a little soft plastic, just floating back with the current, sinking, you know, we might pop it up a little bit, and it's going to sink and float down along with that current. With that current, so as we put a big long cast up out in front of that bridge, all we're doing with the reel is just picking up slack. Okay, you're not winding it through the water. You're not pulling the line through the water. You're just winding up slack. So you might hear about people talk, talking about a controlled belly in the line. So the line's not taut. We don't want the line tight because if we tighten up the line it's going to pull the lure towards the rod tip. We just want that plastic to waft down, maybe bump up a little bit, 
waft back down and let the current do all the work. So it looks really natural. It's finesse fishing. It's really quite deadly. Okay, this is this is really good if you can't cast all that great, as long as you're not casting it up into the bridge. But if you put a big long cast out past that front pylon and you just let the current waft that plastic back through, maybe pop it up a little bit so it's not getting snagged on the bottom and it's still moving, slowly winding up that slack, it's going to hit those high percentage fish positions. So where um, our estuary marlin are all sitting here, and our chances of catching a fish are a lot higher than if we just try and hit every single pylon with one cast. Um, a good thing to keep in mind too, you want to keep it close to those, those pylons. So if I cast right up and it's out a bit, if I pass, cast right up past that bridge, I can stick the rod tip towards that last pylon and just keep it in nice and tight to the pylons. Um, also worth mentioning, at the front, you'll also get a pressure wave up against the front pylon, and that's also a really good place to, to hit, or that's another high percentage fish spot. Okay, so a couple of important things here. Current is kind of pushing all the fish into those back eddies, but it's also working like our sushi conveyor belt, and that's going to bring all the bait to the fish. Okay, let's keep that in mind. I'm going to try and switch it up. Here we've got a pontoon, right? So different type of structure, but the idea is exactly the same. It's all about using current to um, finesse that bait through high percentage fish areas or fish holding areas and trying to get them to bite. So here again, big yellow arrow showing where the current's pushing. Now with the pontoon, again, we're going to have a bit of a pressure wave at the front. At the back, there's going to be a big, nice back eddy. And we're going to have fish sitting or hanging around up underneath that pontoon. So if we can cast right up, up nice, right, right up in front and get our lure wafting down with the current, pop it up off the bottom a couple of times, wafting down with the current, we're hitting all these high percentage fish holding areas. Okay, there's also other fish holding areas like if there were poles on this jetty underneath the water, or those the front face and the back face of the eddy of that pontoon always also going to hold fish but if we can work that line that red line there we're hitting whole we're maximizing our our fishing zone okay we're not hitting one point we're maximizing our fishing zone and we we're, we're upping our chance of catching a fish right here's another really great trick with this so instead of having the boat my rowboat here parked right up behind the pontoon that's a really good spot for it because again you can cast way up tuck the the rod tip again sort of lined up with that pontoon and just again just taking up the slack of the line if i park it out a little bit further that dotted blue line i can i can almost fang a cast right up over just over the corner of that pontoon and if I use my rod to kind of get make sure the line's not on the pontoon, I can drift that plastic back underneath the pontoon. Again, this relies on you just winding up the slack with your reel. You're not trying to pull on the lure. Because if I cast up there and my rod tip's not right in line with underneath the pontoon and I start winding, it's going to pull the lure out from under the pontoon. If you're in a kayak you can, and in a boat with electric too, you can almost chuck it up over the corner of that pontoon and then drift in behind the pontoon and you're almost bringing that lure straight under the pontoon in super prime fish holding areas. So again, this is the whole idea. It's using the current or the water flow to concentrate the fish in back eddies and then using that current flow to work your lure. All right. So one of the things that's really important when you're doing this, or if you want to do it well, is not using too heavy of a jig head. So you don't want your lure just plummeting down and hitting the bottom. You want it wafting with the current. So with our little slim swim, or our grub that I talked about in the last video, a 1 12th jig head's pretty good, right? It's going to get it to sink, but it's not going to drop down really quickly. It's just going to float down through the water current, and that flowing water is going to help move the lure for you. 
So again, you're not ripping it through the water, the current's moving it along, the current's moving your lure for you and doing all the work. All right, so a couple of techniques that you can use in a couple of situations here. Um, yeah, get out there, smash them. Go catch some fish, give it a go, see how you go, get back to me, let me know how, you, how you're doing, and yeah, happy days. See ya.